is Bill Topper here. That's Terry Marsh, who was due to defend his European light welterweight crown against the Ugandan uh, Mohamed Magukawoya. But unfortunately, he couldn't actually sort out his Danish naturalization. So Italy's Francesco Prezioso gets his chance. The champion talked to Jim Rosenthal. Terry, a championship fight, but really, you're so relaxed, it's almost like another day at the office for you. Well, it is uh, exactly another day at the office. It's a job to do, and uh, I'm going to see it through. Once again, you've had no trouble at all making the weight, a touch of chocolate gatto last night, even. That's right, yeah. Uh, well, lightweight isn't beyond me, really. So I've got uh, so many options open, not only fighting for a possible world title, well, like welterweight, but lightweight must be on the cards as well. What are your expectations, then, from this fight? Uh, well, I'm open to win. Uh, I don't know nothing about the opponent, which could be said is a bad thing. In fact, on the Isle of Man, they have a saying, it's better to be forewarned than three-legged. Uh, but I must be, I'm guilty of uh, not going into his form. But that's about par for the course with you. You're not a great studier of opponents, are you? Well, I'm too busy concentrating on my own condition, my own fitness, so I've got no time to worry about the opponent. Now, one thing that has worried you in about the last three fights is your hand. Is that OK now? Uh, well, I said it was OK in the previous three fights as well, but I'd be f unknown to you, I had my fingers crossed behind my back, so all I can say is it's fine. And I think in training, you've really been banging away well with that hand, haven't you? Well, it's the first time I've been able to use it properly since September, and I've had, been able to prepare, to prepare for the fight with a left hand, which I haven't been able to do for the last three fights, so it is in good nick. Finally, all sorts of options are opening up for you, but is there a danger that one slip and they could all go out of the window? Uh, there's always that possibility. That's what makes boxing so exciting. Yeah. Very good luck this afternoon, Terry. Thanks, Jim. Thanks very much. Terry Marsh, very fit and very positive, and we shall see him defend the European light welterweight crown against Italy's Francesco Perezioso after this. Yes, welcome back to the Isle of Man, and here the stage is set at the Palace Lido for the European Light Welterweight Championship fight. Basil and Terry Marsh in his second defense of this title against the Italian Francesco Perezioso, who comes from Genoa. The fight is in the ring, and there's Terry Marsh. Well, he has a formidable record. He is unbeaten, and a single draw is the only blemish on a 22-fight record. Prezioso is the new Italian champion, but his record isn't exactly impressive. He's had 18 fights, 12 wins, two defeats, and amazingly, four fights have been drawn. We'll rejoin Reg Guttridge and John Watt, Jim Watt in just a moment, but first, here's Nat Basso, the MC. Gentlemen, please. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the afternoon, a 12 rounds international light welterweight contest of three minutes each round and a match made at nine stone. A ten stone between and in addition to you defending his title, the light welterweight champion of Great Britain and Europe from Basildon, Terry Marsh. And in this corner from Italy, the light welterweight champion of Italy, Francesco Prezio. At the weigh-in at one o'clock this, this afternoon, both boys scaled nine stone, 13 and a half pounds. Your officials appointed by the European Boxing Union your referee, Knut Jensen of France, Judge Arson of Sweden, and Judge Egmont Biblo of Germany. Thank you. So there you are, looking very confident, uh, Terry Marsh, I must say, and I hope uh, for his sake that he doesn't have problem with that left hand again. It really swell up to balloon size when uh, he won the vacant European Championship against another Italian, Scapechi, which uh, you may have seen on ITV, from Monte Carlo. We know very little, Jim Watt and I, about uh, Prezioso, who's 27, and uh, won the championship in February. Sort of came from nowhere. But what we do know is from the stable of the current world champion at this weight, Patrizio Oliva of Italy. Course, uh, that's the man, one, one of the two men anyway, that Marsh has got his eyes on, but he's got to defend 
this championship, 1,500 people here at uh, Toledo at the Isle of Man. And the show, of course, sponsored by the Isle of Man Tourist Board. We've uh, Frank Bruno and Norman Wisdom and Errol Christie and uh, kinds of odd personalities around in this audience who have appreciated uh, good boxing on the show. They've been a very fair crowd, obviously a neutral island in every respect then. So let's find out now whether Italian's got too much ammunition. My gymnasium touts tell me he's not that great a puncher, but a bit useful boxer. Yeah, I must say he's got uh, shorts on that have been a little bit long in the tooth, and old-timers might say the old footballer Alex James must have left them to him. It's a long time since Terry Marsh even lost a contest, still burnt up a bit because he didn't go for Britain in the Olympics, although he was ABA champion, and uh, Joey Frost of Liverpool was sent instead. Still a very active fireman indeed. Builders Basildon in Essex, but doesn't like to forget his upbringing in Stepney, very much of an original East Ender. I said on many occasions watching Terry Marsh, I said he underestimated his durability early in his career. He's, he's a hard fella to nail, and you don't get by with an unbeaten record unless you can take a punch. Well, he looks a bit wiry and uh, Milk skinned at times, I tell you, he's uh, the old, the old uh, Marine Commando. It's a, it's a tough customer. Minute to go then in the opening round. Scheduled for 12 at the 10 stone limit. And they both came in at 9, 13 and a half. So it's uh, an even match in that respect. Well, it looks like being an interesting contest, Jim. I think, I think Mars is going to stamp the authority on him any second, though. Well, Prezzo looks a little bit better than maybe some people have given him credit for. He's very sharp, very quick. Uh, he has the typical good Italian defence, hands held nice and high, watching his opponent all the time. Mars has been throwing a lot of punches, but not landing too many clean shots. I don't think it's going to be an easy fight. I think it's going to take a, a few rounds. Uh, for Marsh to get on top. The Italian also seems to be prepared to stand his ground. He hasn't been running up. I haven't seen him on the ropes, as a matter of fact. So he's shaping up like a nice one. Well, almost into extra time there. At the end of that round, that exchange. And these cheers, of course, for the, the rounds lady, Miss Isle of Man, Fiona Hartley. One of the fighting contenders in Miss World, too. Very popular figure, obviously, on the island. But I think uh, as Marsh and Prodioso have got other things on their mind at the moment. And uh, certainly, if I know Mrs. Marsh, you'll be thinking that about him anyway. 27, Terry Marsh. And as I say, boxed for the Stepney at St George's Club. And uh, he really appeared in, I think, five consecutive finals. And he won three at light and welterweight as an amateur. Very creditable boxer indeed. The Italian actually has only stopped one opponent. Seconds so I would think that Marsh will take those all right. Round two. Second round. And as Jim Watt said that uh, Italian's a bit lively, knows how to defend himself, perhaps a little bit better than we thought. He's got a, a shrewd old operator in his corner, the Italian, Bruno Accardi, who won the World Championship for a while back in 74 at this weight and was also the European champion in 68 and 70. So he can impart, impart a bit of that knowledge to Preziozzo, who knows? Preziozzo, I understand, is, uh, could be interpreted in English as precious. Well, he's jabbing away well with a left hand, Marsh, Jim, so he obviously feels confident now that it's uh, it's mended. Yeah, yeah, he, seem, he seems to be putting a nice little bit of power into the jab. He's not landing too cleanly yet. Preziozzo's pretty shifty, pretty slippery. Uh, 
I think it's going to take a couple of rounds maybe for Mars to slow him down. The, the Italian seems prepared to come forward. It might be a good idea for Mars to allow him to come forward, make some mistakes, because I don't think he's used to attacking. And uh, that, that would allow Mars to go back to his old style of boxing, the uh, counter on the retreat with some nice stiff little punches. from the crowd as an unfortunate waiter dropped all the glasses at the bar at the back of the hall. Well, it looks very much like a thinking contest and... Uh, Terry Marsh was junior chess champion in London at one time, so he can turn boxing into a chess match. He outgunned Scapecchi of Italy in Monte Carlo, stood there and traded with him and really started to knock the heart out of him after a while. I'm wondering if he can do it with this fellow or not. He looks a livelier fighter, I think, than Scapecchi was. There's always some fear that Marsh might get caught as he rushes in with his head a little bit there. The Italian fighter. And he's, he's been cut in a previous fight, but he overcame that. But he, he got cut early in the contest. There's often too far to go then to be able to staunch it. Referee is uh, Knut Jensen from Denmark. And the judges are from Luxembourg and Germany. That's Bruno Akari, former world champion, European champion in the ring with him. A, a good old hand in the game. And uh, Rezioso was telling me he deals in uh, clothing in a market uh, south of Rome. So let's have a look at some replay now. You notice that left hand. He uses a bit of a when it's time signal at times, Marsh. He likes to get his man on the end of that while he's figuring out what the next punch could be. Fossey and uh, Brian Waters working there in Terry Marsh's corner. And he's, the last time he only count he's taken in his pro career was very early on against Gary Brooks down in South End. And he only lost 16 of 200 amateur contests. And the one draw in his record is against Second Lloyd out. Christie, Errol's brother. Round three. Errol is in the audience this afternoon. And uh, he's fighting next Thursday in London. I should say Wednesday. So in the round three then, of this European light welterweight 10 stone division championship, defending champion, the Britain Terry Marsh. Had to go 12 rounds at a Contest against Tech Kalikenti of Zaire at Alexander Palace in January in a defense of the championship. And Kalikenti went back and uh, then won the championship of France again. There is obviously domiciled. Well, I tell you, the Italians getting uh, plenty of encouragement really i wouldn't have thought marsh could expect jim to get this sort of quietness in a hall if he boxed in italy no uh, actually a very appreciative crowd uh, this afternoon there are no local boys boxing so they're just here to, to enjoy the boxing uh, yeah, no bias no prejudice it's a lovely crowd uh, terry's at a difficult stage in his career because he's thinking about the next step in his career but he still has to pump himself up for these european title defenses uh, people look upon him as the, the best in, in his weight in Europe, but by far, if you know what I mean. So it's difficult. His, his opponents are always underestimated, and it's difficult for uh, Terry to look good. If he wins easy, it's expected of him. If he doesn't, then it's a bad performance. But uh, Petrosio is certainly a lot better than we thought he would be. Well, 
Well, it's obvious if he didn't win this contest, any chance of a, a world title fight would be out. So there's a lot, to, as you say, carrying a lot of weight on his shoulders there. He's a busy, he nags away with punches, Pozzioto. Jim, but they're scoring. Yeah, he's uh, prob probably more, more of a nuisance, as you say. But uh, he's making Terry think all the time. He's making him work all the time. He's quite happy to, to go at the same pace as Marsh. So I think it's, it's possibly going to be a survival of the fittest. Well, Marsh has never been found wanting in that department. Oh, no, if it comes to digging in the trenches, I think you can certainly rely on Marsh as part of the action. But then we don't know what Prezioso could do. Understand when he won the Italian Championship, although I didn't know the opposition, he came on strong at the finish. So coming up to the end then of the third. Managing to answer back the trainer there. The advice is coming up. Yeah, a little bit of decoration for the scenery in the Isle of Man there from Fiona. He won four, four, four out of five fights inside the distance in uh, 85, Terry Marsh. But uh, then he had a long distance fight with Lee McKenzie when his hands started to play him up a bit. So, very much there, the the Cockney voice of uh, Ernie Fossey blowing in Marsh's ear. They won't need an interpreter, those two. Seconds out. Round four. Into the fourth round, then. And just in case you've joined us then, late. Terry Marsh in the Cambridge Blue Trunks against Prezioso of Italy, Litany, just south of Rome, although he's been based in Genoa in the Bruno Accardi camp. And it's 12 rounds for the European Championship at 10 stone, light world of this. So he's just trying to step the pace up a bit and uh, Prezioso marks just below the left eye there in the corner, Jim. Not very serious, just a little mark. Yeah, no problem there. But Marsh uh, was, was beginning to find the range at the end of the third round. Uh, he's got his timing together, got his act together. He's warmed up nicely, landing some nice little punches. there for the marsh of course if this was uh, a bit further south you'd uh, get half the off-duty firemen turning up from Basildon. he has to take a good ribbing from them win lose or draw and get the tea when he returns to work but i would imagine they don't admit it but they're quite proud of him down there Started to dominate a bit this round, Jim, as the champion. Yeah, but he's never managed to, to control Prezioso at all, but he, he's found his range a bit better. He's been pushing the Italian back more often than the early stages. So I think things are beginning to go his way, but there's still plenty of fight left in the Italian. So then half a minute to go in the fourth. And Marsh just stepping up the pace now, now just tracking him down. It's the first time that Preziozzo has been forced back. The way Marsh 
Arce has been boxing recently. I think it's going to take an opponent with a fair bit of power to trouble him, to knock him out of his stride, and I don't think the Italian has enough power to do that. So there's an old pal of mine who will entertain, of course, Norman Wisdom, who lives in the Isle of Man. Southpaw flyweight in the army when I first knew him, and I'll tell you what, he doesn't look a day older. So you can hardly see that mark around uh, Preziozzo's face, although I see that they've got the swab sticks be behind the ears there, which incidentally the World Boxing Council or the medical panel said they'd rather seconds not do in future, but keep them well wrapped up. There it is, just a little bit of maybe Vaseline or adrenaline cream around the eye of uh, Francesco Pariozzo, the Italian champion. He won that in uh, February, by the way. I wanted somebody called uh, Salvatore Nardino, who was previously unbeaten. Second so round. Good performance. Round five. Into the fifth round, then. You get the impression that uh, Marsh is just biting a bit harder on that gum shield now and getting on with this job because he's realized that uh, the challenge is a bit of a nuisance keeps nagging away with punches as I said at the start it doesn't appear to be the best of punches with only one stoppage on his record but he must catch some judges eyes because he's had the amazing four drawn contest the banksman and others giving uh, Marsh all the encouragement now when he ducks and dives like that the Italian Jim Marsh is finding it a bit too difficult to catch him he probably have to start using some uppercut punches yeah well he's very difficult to catch even with uppercuts no matter what, what Terry throws He's very difficult to catch because he has good concentration and he's thinking about defence all the time. They're looking to slip Marsh's punches and come back with counters. He's a difficult opponent. He's never been able to take the initiative, therefore Marsh is in good shape for winning the contest. But uh, he's got a difficult job if he's looking for an inside the distance win. Well, he certainly wants to get on now, hopefully to retain this championship and uh, possibly get into a world title fight. I mean, that, that it's not just a hype on the promotion part because he's already been offered a fight with Lonnie Smith, who's one half of the world champion. That's the WBC. The World Boxing Association one is held, as I said, by Oliva of Italy, who was the gold medalist in the Moscow Olympics and the best style winner. And the stablemate of Vizioso. And, of course, considerably better with... Uh, 40-odd unbeaten contests. He keeps an opponent occupied well, Marsh, doesn't he? He doesn't give him too much room. Yeah, but I think he, he's entitled to feel a little bit frustrated because he's finding it very difficult to land cleanly on the Italian. And the Italian is quite accurate with his own counter punches. But Mar Marsh is always too busy and they're dictating the action too much to be losing the rounds, so, so he's getting himself into good shape. But uh, I would imagine pretty frustrated by now. So coming up then, the countdown for the end of the fifth. A little smile there by Terry Marsh as well. You have to say, what was that all about, mate? As he threw a little flurry of punches. A 157 rounds as a pro before he came into this contest so he really does know the boxing business he's still got to influence the referee and the judges from Luxembourg and Germany very calm as well in the Italian corner as to Agostini who's been around for years on the outside of the ropes handled a lot of good fighters in his time seems a long conversation going in there Jim I wish we could eavesdrop yeah, well, he, he's, he's never looked... Well, when they come into the ring at the start of the fight, it wasn't overawed. He seemed to be quite relaxed. They looked quite looking forward to the fight. Even now, he doesn't look too worried. But... Uh, I 
thought he may be blowing a bit, to be honest. There, he, uh, I know they all have got the mannerisms in the corner. Seconds out. Could be misinterpreted, but round he might have been blowing a bit there. So round six. Scheduled in the championship for 12. Cut down some years ago now from 15 to 12, the British and the European contest. And uh, only the WBA and uh, the International Boxing Federation now are retaining the 15 round courses. Great shot there, wasn't it, from Marsh? I think he's more or less abandoned the idea of trying to straighten uh, Prezioto up. He knows he's going to have this duck and diving uh, head in front of him. Yeah, well, Marsh is doing the right thing. He's keeping the Italian under pressure all the time, and eventually some cracks have to appear. Constant pressure. That He'll maybe break his concentration, cause him to become a little bit ragged. It hasn't happened yet, and the Italian's almost ready to come back with counters. But it's good luck from Marsh. He's, he's very much in boxing parlance, the governor, Jim, now. Well, we well, said before, it would be handy if Marsh had a little more power when you start thinking about him in, at world level. Uh, he really could be doing with just a little bit more punching power, a little bit more physical strength in a fight. I think that's maybe where he'll be slightly let down at top level. Midway through the sixth. <laughs> it certainly doesn't seem to be any hand trouble from Marsh because he's firing in the punches too quickly. Though he hides his pain very well, as he's proved in previous fights, but there's certainly no sign of it here. minute to go and I still feel there's a certain amount of well not desperation but frustration on uh, Prezioso's face saying how am I going to try and outpoint this fellow yeah well, he is under pressure all the time Marsh has never given him a second to think to set up any moves of his own any moves uh, Prezioso has it's uh, counter punching moves he's never been able to take the initiative at all and that's probably the, the best way for Marsh to go about his job Letting some of those left leads fall a bit short now. He doesn't want to do that. Plenty of advice coming in from Errol Christie, who's sitting over there in Marsh's corner. What sort of advice now would they be pushing for Marsh there? This, uh... Look, well, I think they'll tell him just to keep doing what he's doing, but if he could step in a bit more, a little bit more punching power to try to discourage Prezioso, he's never managed to do that. Here we see here, now and again, Prezioso's managing to push Marsh back, not too often, but uh, a little bit more power in the punches, I think, would be what we expect from Marsh now. Step in with the punches and stay there when he goes in. And somewhere along the line there, just collected a little cut around the eye, Marsh. Uh, we didn't really notice that until there it is there, Ernie Fossey working on it over the left eye. And that's a shame. I was, I was talking earlier about the possibility of uh, the seconds cut coming. Out. It's well away, as professional Round seconds seven. would say, from any danger point, and it's quite small. Round seven. giving him a bit of an interesting contest, Prezioso, but I've got Marsh well in front, Jim. Yeah, he, he, as I said earlier, he always has, uh, has the initiative. He's never been allowed. He's never been forced back at all. He's always managed to keep the, the Italian on his back foot. But uh, I'd like just to see a little bit more power into the punches to try and discourage him. Tanner's left eye just swelling up there, the cheek. As I say, somebody's been hitting him, and I think mostly with the left hand of Marsh. Oh, 
Marsh is too cagey a customer to open up unless he's absolutely sure that he's got the man on the hook. He knows he's got a few rounds to go. And he'll only do that if he knows he's got the man in his sights. He has managed to stop six opponents nonetheless. I said he had a, a long run uh, last year of stopping people. quite a bit really around the eye of the Italian gym the left eye yeah well Marsh has been throwing a lot of punches all the way through a nice little right hand from the Italian there but no trouble Mar Marsh is one of the best chins in the business uh, a good right hand from Marsh too but uh, well in front well in front but uh, nice if we could see a, a positive finish from him but uh, I'm not expecting that Yeah, good chin and heart to match. And as uh, Jim Watt says, it could just do with that edge more of power when you're in the world class, because he is world ranked now, Terry Marsh. Terry mentioned that he thinks he could also do lightweight. He doesn't seem to have too much spare flesh. I can't really see him get another uh, five pounds off. Can you, Rich? No, I think I, I still think it was that like well the weight division, and not nine nine the light weight. <laughs> so the big conversation going on there with the Italian, isn't it? I'm I'm, I'm just uh, wondering what that's all about. Let's have another look there at Marsh's injury. Yeah, <laughs> but of course, experience with these seconds, I, I admit total bias as uh, my father uncle grandfather were in this business for many years and it's amazing how the seconds can patch people up Jim as you say when you box you the crowd know uh, whether the cuts good bad or indifferent but you never do is that right yeah that's a fact you're the only one who can't see it but uh, Terry's a sensible fellow I don't think you'll worry too much you you listen to what the seconds say and get back and go on with his job it's, it's it's only what they call in trade terms a nick isn't it really yeah, that shouldn't be any trouble at all. Seconds out. Round eight. Round eight of the European Championship at Ten Stone. Second defence by the British champion, still Terry Marsh, who is actually scheduled to defend the British Championship against Tony Lang in May. Italian television is here to cover this as some Italian journalists turned up. Got a bit of a nosebleed too now, Prezioso, to match that swelling around the eye a bit. They're the point scoring left jabs now coming in from March. This, the judges uh, take good note of those. Just falls a bit short occasionally. But I'd like to see a class fighter like Marsh make them all land, or nearly all of them anyway. But see, there we are, just flicking the, enough to keep the Italian occupied while he's making up his mind about what next punch is coming, like that. The Italian has a good defense. Uh, Typically, the Italian boxers, they normally, they normally have a tight defence. But uh, if Terry would step in just a little bit closer, just a couple of inches, he would get the shoulder behind the jab and maybe open Prezzo's up a bit. But see, you see, Marsh is standing at, at full distance from him, so when the jabs land, it's, it's not strong enough to discourage him. And so the Italian can come over the top of the punches. If Marsh would just step in a little bit closer and put the shoulder behind it, maybe break his defences down a bit. It to go in this round, and this, uh, the Italians 
getting some cheering, I suspect, from a lot of the hotel staff around here, Jim, have turned out to help him. <laughs> Referee's had an easy job. He, he just warned Pazziotto early on for low punches. He's getting a, a second bow. So uh, I suppose what they mean is you can throw a low punch as long as you bow afterwards. along by our commentary position here. We're near the Italians' corner, really, and uh, they're really getting a bit excited as though their man can win. I think, uh, he surprised me at this stage, anyway, if that happened. But I have to say, he's still in there punching. So there's the, the referee, Knud Jensen. Can we steal a look at it? Oh, well, almost, Jim. Yeah, well, I think we can safely say Mars is pretty well ahead in points. He's always been forcing the pace. He's always been the busier of the two. Uh, most of his punches are landing on the, the top of the Italian's head, but there are still point-scoring punches. So there's Errol Christie then, uh, beaten, of course, by Mark Kaler, but now uh, there he is in the, in the white sweater at ringside there talking to one of the seconds, and he's come to, to support Terry Marsh now that he's using the same gymnasium. And he's boxing uh, against Tony Burke. Seconds out. Next Wednesday. Round nine. Round nine. <laughs> A few bumps and bruises of battle, but nothing serious. And uh, certainly... The corner men have done a good job with Terry Marsh. Even as close as we are to it, Jim, you can hardly see a scratch there. It's incredible, yeah. really, isn't it? Just a slight little nick, no problems at all. Well, Precioso is uh, a lot better than we give him credit for right enough. You know, a good all-round little professional. He sticks to his job, he keeps busy all the time, good defence. Certainly a, a good bit better than Scapecchi, uh, the man bought the Terry box for the title. Oh yeah, this, this fella's got a bit more fire in his belly than Skopecki had in the day. Oh, they, they love a punch that misses the boxing crowd, always have done, the oohs and ahs. Mass is coming in a little bit closer now, and that's what we need. We need him to step in just an extra six inches, stand his ground and let some punches go. Most of his punches are from full range, and the, the, the sting is out of the punch before it lands, but he's getting a bit closer now. This is better from Marsh. Since then, certainly the crowd are not objecting, and neither the board of control inspectors. But I would think that he's probably got too much in his mind to worry about that sort of stuff. So he can put in a big finish when he wants to, Terry Marsh. Remember, he had a great fight with Clinton McKenzie for the British Championship in London. And that last round matched uh, practically any you could name in a championship fight, really. There's a little bit of safety first stuff early on, Terry Marsh. That's why he's lasted and got an unbeaten record. Starting to throw a few more punches now in the ninth. Championship fights are only six ounces. There's eights and tens in uh, world title fights now. 
But uh, a lot of boxers, Jim, say the size doesn't make any difference. In fact, some think that the bigger they are, uh, the wider the, the, the pain. Yeah, well, I think the little bit extra padding certainly helps. Uh, but uh, I don't think it matters in this particular fight because neither of the boys are really knockout specialists. But there uh, are plenty of punches being landed, plenty of action all the way through. I would say that was Marsh's best round. He raised the pace just when he should have raised the pace. He, he never gave uh, Prezioza a, a second respite. And uh, maybe the, the Italian just became a little bit ragged a couple of times. So maybe Marsh is beginning to get something back for all the work he's put out. Well, the Italian's unbeaten in his last 12, so he's, he must know a little bit about this. Been difficult to catch, as you say. The seconds out. A town called Latina, south of Rome. Come from. <laughs> Round 10. Jensen, the Danish referee, they're pulling them apart. I don't blame Prezioso for trying to hang on there, but he's warning him, Jensen. Uh, quite a bit of action then in the opening minute of the tenth. Scheduled for 12 rounds. It's, a, it's unofficial, but I hear one of the judges had uh, Marsh ahead 89-86 at the end of that uh, last round, Jim. Three-point lead. Yeah, well, that, that's, that's, uh, that's at least should be the case, I would say, three rounds. Uh, I think maybe there was a word with Terry in the corner saying you're well ahead in points, and let's see you showing off a little bit. Let, let, let's show that the people, you're on national television live, let's show the people what you can do instead of just being happy with a points win because Marsh has certainly raised the pace. He's got up much closer to the Italian and he's putting punches together, good hooks. Yeah, this is far better from Marsh. And the way Pacioto has been hanging on, there's a good chance Marsh could stop him now. The referee warned him twice for holding. Right above us here in the commentary position and a minute to go in the 10th. To influence a referee to stop him, he just might have to score a knockdown, Marsh. Can he do that? See, it's the volume of punches that was keeping the Italian on the defensive there. He wasn't troubled at all by the power of the punches. But uh, still a lot better work from Marsh now. Yeah, good clear round this for Marsh. Full point scoring by the Europeans, only in half point uh, in British. And it's a long drag back to the corner for Prezioso and here's Marsh. And as you may have picked up there, he said, I know he's tired. Obviously, only Fossi has told him that and to get him to come out now for the next round and put some pressure on let's have a look now at some replay there this was a good round for marsh and uh, the italian twice warm for holding on i don't blame him when you're getting a little bit pummeling around the ribs like that but i would like just like to see him pick those punches a bit more he was he was putting on a show with the punches jim rather than landing them in his... yeah and there were only arm punches too that you know it wasn't turning at the hip and the shoulder so there were not, not really a great deal of power in the punches but uh, again is that the fight needed it. I think Marsh realises that his corner have told him it's time to show off now. You're talking about fights in world class, then let's start looking like world class. Uh, put a show on for the people, but he certainly tried to do it in that round. Seconds out. Round 11. The 11th round. He's a good style, Terry Marsh, as he proved with 
Fenton McKenzie and again with a very awkward African Callan Ketty last time up. He's been uh, three times he's completed the 12 rounds course, but can he stop this fellow? Telling uh, Jim, he's coming back trying to take a little bit of the play away now. He's still full of fight, yeah, he's got himself in good condition. And Marsh's trouble is he doesn't have the power to discourage an opponent. I mean, well, when you get an opponent on the defensive, he should be thinking about defence, you, you should be worrying about what you're going to do next. I've got a good right hand from Marsh there, but again, the Italian just come right on through it. Well, the crowd recognised that, and I'm sure the Italian did, who took it on the chin. So head up now, he's being told he hasn't got much chance now. He's already behind and the warnings are coming in. The Italian is making more mistakes now. He's a far more stationary target now. If, uh, if Terry can just keep him off at arm's length again, he should be landing more, more cleanly now. Oh, he turned that left hand lead into a good uppercut there. to go in the 11th. Hey. The two cockney voices in the old uh, Arthur Daly style, turn him round tell, we can hear from the back of the hall here. And I think the Manxmen uh, prefer to watch a bit of boxing. They're trying to be impartial. drawn a few cheers isn't it, from the crowd who then don't mind ditching the impartiality I think when Marsh does well so there's Bruno Akari the former champion probably saying to his man now listen you hang in there in the last round you're probably not going to get the decision but uh, in the professional boxing business, you've got to always look good for promoters to want to book you, and you are the Italian champion, and it's being shown uh, live in Italy. Terry Marsh, Grace, as I said, above the eye there. He kept that one under control in the corner with the one in the thousand adrenaline, which is permitted only by the Boxing Board of Control. The Spectres, of course, sitting in both corners to make sure that nobody slips a horseshoe in the gloves or use uh, any coagulates that are forbidden. So he's up uh, before the start time in the last round there, the British and European champion from Basel in Essex. 12th and so last, the last round. round now, the final thing for the fighting final, a bit late getting the gun shield in there with Prezioso. And uh, a polite round of applause from this crowd too for the start of the last. Lots of appeals here near the Italian's corner for what we would interpret as come on Franco. Well, I think they've told the Italian if ever he needs a knockout, he needs it now. Uh, he's trying to push Mars back, trying to get some power into his own punches, but uh, no, I think that's more of a dream than anything else. I don't think he has the power to upset Mars at all. No, only one stoppage in his career, that uh, the horn glide stuck true here. Oh, yeah. oh, he's having a putt now in the last match. Two minutes to go in the last. 
Just firing away almost piston-like action there from the fireman. I don't blame Precioso for hanging on. And just in case those judges have not quite got it the way Jim Watt and I have, I think he's saying, well, how about this, fellas, to make sure. Minute and a half. Right above us here, and they're telling you, pumping away with those punches, Marsh. Jensen is going to dive in on this one. No, he's just going to part them there. I know referees don't really like to stop it in the last round, Jim, particularly if the other fellow, well, hasn't, if the loser hasn't been down, as they say. Yeah, well, 90% of Marsh's punches were being blocked by the Italian then. The referee was, was keeping a close scrutiny on, but uh, no problem at all. The Italian's a little bit tired. Uh, Marsh still has plenty of steam left. He's raised the pace, but uh, it wasn't in any serious trouble as far as being hurt was concerned. Well, most of the punches landing on the arms and gloves. Well, he's having a bit of a go back. Fair luck. Fair dues for the challenger. Marsh should more or less resign with just under half a minute to go. But he won't be able to stop this fellow. A bit of blood uh, showing around Prezioso's uh, forehead there. So the last 10, too late for a KO because the bell would interrupt the count anyway. What a fling there, and he's smiling. Well, friendly finishing up, and uh, Marsh is first to lead the applause. And I think Prezioso's quite pleased uh, that he stayed the course. Um, well, we've been misreading this fight entirely if the judges and uh, the referee are voting for the Italian, but there you are, who knows in this game, so hang with us, don't leave yet. The old wink from Terry Marsh. And uh, almost a standing ovation. Well, it is a standing ovation from the crowd, and the Stewards of the Border Control, Dr. Barnett. It's uh, coming in to adjudicate to make sure that the scoring is OK before the MC Nakbasso reads it. So uh, we can tell you in advance, I think, that uh, the referee and judges have, in fact, scored for Marsh. Because there's nods all round of satisfaction, I think, but the referee's got to go through the formality of checking those points. The board officials are doing that with him now. There they are. MC Nat Basso writing it down. Dr. Barnett in the middle there. He's officiated for the show and being the steward in charge. And Simon Block from the London end of the board of control. So come on, fellas, sort out the mathematics, please. And uh, please relieve the tension at this stage. But as I say, our eyes from the other side of the ring uh, say that the judges have uh, given it to him anyway. Anxious uh, looking promoter there, Frank Warren, saying, come on, can we get the decision, please? Who also happens to manage to Terry Marsh, who I think he must be concerned about it. Gentlemen, please, ladies and gentlemen, the referee, Knud Jensen, scores March 120 points. Parisio, 107 points. Judge... Big margin. Judge Argin Klopp scores the contest. Marsh, 118 points. Parisio, 114 points. Judge Edmund Biblo scores it. Marsh, 120 points. Parisio, 112 points. Marsh is the winner. Well, there it is, and it's, a, it's almost a runaway there with 220 points, Jim. Yeah, well, uh, two, two of the officials did not give the Italian a round at all. That's it then, so uh, here's Jim Rosenthal talking to the champion. Terry Marsh, many congratulations, but I noticed you're wincing when you pulled the glove off of the left hand. It obviously gave you trouble. It's the same script again, Jim. I'm getting bored saying it, but uh, it hurts. 
didn't affect the performance. I wanted to go the distance uh, for the two reasons. He's a stable mate of Patricia Olivia. That's a WBA title fight over 15 rounds. I've also got a British title fight, hopefully coming up uh, soon over 12 rounds. So I need plenty of distance. And uh, I'm, I think my forte is my stamina, and I'm certainly going to need it in the likes of Olivia and Lenny Smith. So I, was, I wanted to hear the 36 minutes of boxing. Terry, I'm delighted you had a chance to have a chat to you. Very well done indeed. There'll be more boxing action coming up in a couple of minutes. Not me, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. Cheers. <laughs>